Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pet Food Puzzle Guy. If you're new, please check out my description and some of my other videos to get an idea of what we do here. And I always say this, that you know I, I do my best to try to be educational and <laughs> inform pet parents uh, against all the marketing and hype out there. But uh, the comments, a lot of times the dialogue in the comments, uh, you can learn a whole lot in there. And there was somebody, uh, actually, I guess, uh, let me see, the name is uh, Fratini. And they, uh, it was a week ago now that they sent a great comment and a question that I really was bewildered about. So I had to check into it and research it. And uh, I think it's worth a video because it just shows the difference between an ingredientist and the way they think and a nutritionist and the way they, they think. And when you can see a real life example of it, I, I think it's very uh, illuminating. So um, I am working on that cats and carbs video. Um, it's it's going to be a great one. It's talking. It's it's Sam, the retailer, talking about cat nutrition, calling himself a cat nutritionist versus an actual board certified nutritionist with tons of credentials and everything else. And I'm stealing some clips from one of her webinars that I watched and we're going to put them kind of piece them together. And for all you cat people, you're going to really enjoy it. Um, and it's going to really annoy Ed, which is just a extra bonus for me in there. So, uh, but anyway, this is, uh, talking about, uh, Hills KD and it was a great question. So let's just jump right in. And again, I hope you see, boy, there's a real life example, which is always great to see versus just these ideas we throw around and debate about. So let's do it. So again, this is from uh, Frattini, this is seven days ago. The only ingredient that bothers me about Hills KD is the spinach. I don't know why they put an oxalate rich food on their kidney diet or in their kidney diet. I recently found that my cat has calcium oxalate crystals and that's why I'm concerned. If you could throw some light on this matter, it would be great because I asked Hills directly and had no answer, thanks. So, so here's the deal, it's a little bit of background here. Uh, KD from, from Hills Prescription Diet is for kidney disease, to manage kidney disease. And there's a, oh geez, there's like six or seven different canned versions now. There's pate and there's stews and all this other stuff. And there's, there's meat and vegetable, and then there's a, a few others. And what Fratini here, I don't know if that's male, female, last name, whatever. But um, this is pretty common that when you have a cat with kidney disease, um, it's not uncommon, I guess, for calcium oxalate stones to occur as well. Now he's saying, or let's just go with he, um, he's saying there's crystals in the, in the urine, so they can easily become stones. So that's the concern. So why in the world, if, if it's real, uh, a, a higher risk of having calcium oxalate stones with, with kidney disease, why would Hills put spinach? A dying, and you can Google it and it'll tell you spinach is high in calcium oxalate. Why would they put that uh, in, the, in a renal diet knowing this? And um, I, I didn't have a really good answer. I had a few ideas in my mind, but I had to go right to the source and call Hills. And um, I did talk with the vet line. So he probably was talking with the pet side, uh, the consumer line. That's a question they would have a really hard time with, I think. So I, I had to go and uh, talk to the vet side. And uh, so I want to give uh, the answer because it's such a, a great example. So, so here's the deal. And this is kind of complicated. It's kind of not, but let me go through it. So if you look at just singular ingredients and you look at spinach, you would say, okay, that's definitely an ingredient. I don't want to put in a renal diet. Sure, it's providing calcium, maybe a couple other nutrients, but it's also high in oxalates. So I don't want it in a renal diet. Um, and that is correct if you're just looking at that individual ingredient. When I talked with Hills, there's a couple of things I learned. One is that it, it, if the spinach is thoroughly cooked, it diminishes the oxalate uh, absorption or uh, availability. I'm probably using the wrong term here. Again, I'm not a nutritionist or a scientist, but cooking it reduces the risk of oxalates from spinach. The other thing it does is if we use spinach, then we don't have to supplement calcium as much in the diet. And this is something, I, I guess I kind of knew this, but it, it, it's nice to get confirmation. The pre-mixes of vitamin and mineral mixes that go into a diet, 
very often have to be specific to that diet. Because if you have a diet like this one where you're trying to control calcium, especially in a therapeutic food, and you're using spinach, you're going to get calcium from the spinach, which means what? Your calcium supplementation is going to be lower. Okay, so what is the real question? How much calcium is available in the spinach or what is the total calcium that's being delivered in the diet and the total amount of oxalates? Okay, um, it's called sock shield and I don't want to, it's, it's a veterinary term that Hills does with all their diets. Okay, every, every prescription diet they make, they put whether or not it's urinary healthy. Okay, whether it, it re, is a low risk of developing struvite or calcium oxalate stones. And this KD diet has that uh, certification. Uh, so do just a, most of the diets from Hills. There's only a few because of their composition that, that are not really stone friendly. But this is one of them because again, the high risk of calcium oxalates along with kidney disease. So what a great example that you can look, and we're going to look at some calcium number, final calcium numbers, which is, this is key. This is the nutrition part. You could be using an ingredient that sounds like, well, wait a minute, that's not a good ingredient for that food, or that's the wrong ingredient for that food, right? Just like uh, Fertini here is, is thinking, maybe this is the wrong ingredient to have in, in a renal diet. Um, if we just look at individual ingredients like um, ingredientists do, you'll come up with the wrong conclusion that, oh, this is a bad diet because it has that ingredient. The nutritionist says, look at the final result. Look at, is it safe as far as calcium oxalate uh, formation, which would be, you know, looking at a few things, minerals, urine pH, things like that. But is it delivering what it needs to to manage the disease uh, in total? So again, the nutritionist looks at, show me the delivery of nutrients based on all your ingredients, the ingredientist says, aha, I see this one bad ingredient. It's bad. So that means the diet's bad. What are some other examples of this? And again, I'm going to just stay with me because we're going to look at some calcium levels in KD with spinach versus other diets that don't have spinach. So they don't have that bad ingredient, but yet look at their calcium level. And of course, you kind of already know, spoiler alert, they're going to be much higher than KD and they better be. Otherwise, we'd have a problem here. I'd have a problem with this video. Uh, but again, notice the difference between the ingredientist and the nutritionist. What would be other examples? Um, corn gluten meal. Sam loves, you know, we just did a video on protein. Corn gluten meal is not as digestible as, as meat. It doesn't have all the amino acids that meat has. So corn gluten meal is bad. It shouldn't, I shouldn't see it in the food. The nutritionist says, well, wait a minute, we add corn gluten meal because uh, methionine is real high, one of the amino acids, and combining corn gluten meal, the protein of, of corn, with meat, maybe along with egg or something else, increases the amino acid profile, gives us a better amino acid profile. So when you look at it nutritionally, the, the finished product, corn gluten meal now has a purpose. If you're just going to compare corn gluten meal to meat, oh, it's bad, it's not as good, and oh, it's a cheap filler, so that diet's bad, I'm not gonna feed it. Uh, another one, which is even a little more uh, weird, is uh, omega-6s. Omega-6s are great for skin and coat. I mean, most diets, uh, normal diets, are gonna be much higher in omega-6s than omega-3s, okay? Uh, one is cost, the other is everybody wants a nice shiny coat and all that. Um, but what's the problem with omega-6s? Well, they're really high, uh, or they're um, a high an uh, inflammatory type uh, ingredient. I don't know how bad, but I know it's in, you, the experts say it's inflammatory. So if you're making an arthritis diet, like I, I just switched both of my guys or girls onto a prescription diet that's both cognitive benefits and joint benefits, uh, you know, uh, pre-arthritis because they're, they're getting up there. Um, that's another video. But um, what is that diet? That diet is going to be much higher in omega-3s because omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. There's still omega-6s in the diet. I can look and see omega-6s. I can see the level and say, oh, the diet is bad for my older dogs because it's inflammatory because it has omega-6s, okay? But that's not the point. Over here with nutrition, I'm seeing, well, you know what? The omega-3s are actually about three times higher than the omega-6s, which is that inverted ratio, you hardly ever find that in any diet on the market. Um, so that makes it an inflammatory diet, even though it has inflammatory ingredients. Does that make sense? So 
uh, Fernini, I'm going to message you and tell you, hey, look for <laughs> look for my video because uh, it was a great question. And again, it just doesn't it illustrate. Uh, I, I hope it illustrates. I mean, maybe maybe she explained it better to me than I am to you. But again, the, the bottom line is show me the nutrients. And so now let's take a look at the calcium level in uh, the KD diets, the, the two. I found it in tuna and vegetable and, and chicken and vegetable. Um, what are their calcium levels? And then what are some of the other calcium levels that if you were just feeding another food to your renal cat, which again, we're not even looking at phosphorus would be even more critical. We're looking, if we're look, got a renal case, there's a lot of things we're looking at, protein, phosphorus, sodium. Um, but we're, the, here we're just looking at uh, the, the calcium level uh, with spinach being in the diet. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so I had to go through some of my videos to find another diet that we could compare to KD because I want to do canned. I had a pl plenty of dry, but this was a canned KD, so I want to compare it to a canned product. And Origin Canned is one that actually Sam the Retailer, which you'll see on the next video, he really likes this one because when you look at the ingredient panel, it's all this meat in here, you know, so he loves that. And it's very uh, feline um, species appropriate and all that. So it's a great popular um, marketing type uh, product. So if you were feeding that to your uh, cat, you would not be feeding any spinach. So there you go. If you're an ingredient test, it's all meat and that's what a cat needs. She's a true carnivore. So she has kidney disease. I sure don't want to feed spinach or if she has calcium oxalate stones. I don't want to feed spinach. So I'm going to feed origin. Well, the total uh, calcium in uh, origin is 290 milligrams per 100 K cows. So 290 milligrams. In the chicken and vegetable KD, it's 173. So it's over a hundred milligrams less uh, in the renal diet versus a regular diet. Um, <clears throat> now, you know, origin is not claiming to be a renal diet. So to be fair, but that level is pretty high, even compared to some other foods like science diet and such. Uh, if you look at the um, tuna and vegetable, and here's a good example for you folks that say, you know, I, I have to, you know, I'm guilty of sometimes not looking at ingredients. And, and that is part of the story. So again, I, I, I agree. Uh, this is tuna and vegetable with the spinach in it. And look at that. The um, calcium goes up to 213, 213 milligrams, but that's versus almost 300 in the origin. So uh, interesting that if you're going to insist on tuna, um, it's driving that calcium level up a little bit that hills, um, you know, that there's a range, there's no gospel number, but definitely it's a little higher. And the phosphorus goes up to, uh, I don't know if I mentioned phosphorus or not, but in the um, both hills diets, it's 110 in the chicken and 127 in the um, tuna in vegetable. And uh, that, that's phosphorus, which of course is critical to, in a renal diet. Uh, in the um, origin, it's 220. So it's basically basically double the phosphorus. So again, uh, you're going to see in the next video, I don't want to be a spoiler alert, but um, a lot of ingredientists think as long as you feed species appropriate and feed a lot of meat to your carnivore cat, she's just going to do great. Um, well, if she's a renal patient, she's not going to do great on that species appropriate diet because what it's very high in calcium. It's very high in phosphorus. Didn't even look at sodium, but the bottom line for this, the subject of this video is if you look at the fact that there's spinach in both those uh, diets with chicken and vegetable and tuna and vegetable, the total calcium uh, which is important to the renal patient and to the calcium oxalate risk. And I'll put up the, the Sock Shield um, logo so you know I'm not making that up. It's actually the Hills goes through and tests to see if the diet will create or um, promote struvite crystal urea or if it will um, promote calcium oxalate. And if it's safe, then it gets this logo. So that's what that, I'll put it up there, Sock Shield. And um, so there you go. I, I hope uh, I hope that answers the question to uh, Frutini. Um, it was a great question. And again, a great illustration of show me bottom line, show me the nutrients, especially when I have a sick animal and I'm, and I'm managing a disease. 
the nutrients matter completely. And we kind of see a little a little uh, insight here that, yeah, if you want to use a, an attractive ingredient like tuna that people want to feed, and we've, you know, I guess Hills feels, you know, the nutritionists feel that, you know, they have to, there's people are going to feed tuna. So if they have a renal patient and we don't make a tuna diet, they're going to go just feed you know, whatever, friskies or something. So you have a tuna alternative, but it does affect the nutrients. They can only control the nutrients so much based on the ingredients they're using. So, so yes, ingredients matter. Okay. I'm never going to get caught again saying the ingredients don't matter. It's just the nutrients. The ingredients indeed matter, but bottom line, show me the nutrients. And um, so there you go. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was a great example. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll get back to work on my cats and carbs video uh, that I'm pretty excited about. We'll see you the next see you next time.